What's up, guys? Tony Skinjui here, talking about part two of the Spender series, classification of spenders. Now, you've probably already seen the value versus worth video. Just in case, though, here's a quick recap. Value is the amount the developers decide an item should cost, whether it be gold or in-game currency. Worth is whether or not you believe you will personally be content with the item at the cost they set. Uh, I went ahead and discussed the four spenders a little bit at the end of that video, but I included the disclaimer that spenders are not classified by the amount of money they spend. That's kind of like a circumstance. Uh, they're classified by their willingness to spend, or more accurately, how strict or loose their definition of worth is. So, as I mentioned, there are four classifications. Uh, guppies, dolphins, whales, and krakens. And we're gonna jump right in and start with the category I believe uh, represents the largest portion of the community, the guppy. Guppies are the players that are incredibly discerning when it comes to offers. If there's not a direct impact of money spent to progress obtained, they're not buying it. There might be a specific character offer or sale offer that motivates or incentivizes a guppy to spend, but guppies are less likely to buy new characters unless they are fans of that character or speculate that the character has a lot of long-term value. For example, a character that's gonna be a part of a very important raid team or uh, an arena meta character, a key component in war, unlocking a future legendary. Uh, I have a couple of sample guppy offers for you. I'm just gonna put them up here. Again, it's not so much the cost of the item, uh, so much as it's the likeliness that obtaining it will generate more value than leaving it on the floor. So moving on, we'll go into Dolphin. Uh, dolphin is about the easiest category you can drift into, uh, whether it be up from Guppy or down from a uh, more aggressive spender. Uh, a, a Dolphin is willing to spend on an offer that uh, immediately helps them. Uh, the Dolphin's kind of a gambler at heart uh, and, and likes to, you know, pull the slot machine lever. And they're willing to spend money on a first-time character offer just for the chance that they get a really strong version of it. Or a character offer uh, if it will exclusively star them up. And when they look at character offers, specifically orb-based character offers, they look at the offer not from the potential high roll, but from the uh, minimum they can expect to obtain. Uh, and, you know, an average a character offer like this you know, there's this many orbs, you get an average of six per orb, sometimes a little bit more. You're just running the numbers to see is this a good amount, whether to unlock or, or star up. Uh, unlike the guppy, the offers have to have uh, just a decent return. Doesn't have to be a one for one direct, this immediately makes an impact. Just just enough to, to show growth, whether it be uh, strength of roster, uh, strength of a team, or uh, accomplishing a task. One of the most common dolphin offers in the game uh, would be a Minerva offer, and we haven't seen one in a while, so I couldn't find the clip for it, but a, a character like Minerva where any amount of Minerva shards can help you unlock her or use her for Fear the Darkness or raid teams. Uh, that's like the quintessential kind of dolphin offer, but I have a couple other examples up here just to give you an idea. Moving on, we have the whale. Uh, whales spend money in lieu of gameplay. Uh, more or less any offer that saves them time uh, is of high impact to them, and that can mean a lot of different things. Their predilection to spend is based on if I buy this, can I avoid doing that? Uh, an example would be if a character is coming out in Blitz, but Blitz tends to take, you know, three days worth of active effort uh, at, you know, varying levels of power. They're like, well, I'm just going to buy this offer, or I'm going to buy 
you know, the offer and maybe a couple of the random rolls. Um, if a character is available through milestones, they're going to say, well, that's an awful lot of stuff I'm going to have to accomplish. And either my work schedule or my free time is, is just not there. And I happen to have cash, so I'm just going to make the purchase in lieu of it. And that's that's the, the quintessential whale purchase. Now, whale isn't somebody that's going to necessarily buy every single offer that comes up, but they're going to look at every offer, and they're going to might take a little bit more time to go, well, you know, uh, this doesn't immediately star up a character, but it's going to save me about 10 to 15 days of farming. Uh, it, this character's in the arena store, and, you know, I'm not really paying too much attention to my arena shard, or... You know, this is the seventh star of a character that uh, I'd rather just not wait another 15 days. I'd rather focus my effort on something else, or I'd rather just not... I'm, I'm impatient, you know, I'd rather spend it. So, whale offers are pretty much any offer that a player can justify will generate a significant amount of value for them uh, incredibly short term. Uh, like today, almost. Uh, and... You know, here's a couple that generally lean into whale territory. And as I said, it doesn't matter how much the offer costs, whether it was a $10 offer or a $100 offer, if it's giving them what they equate to time value, uh, the amount of time they spend or don't have to spend now because they spent it, they're, they're more inclined to buy it. Uh, and that's going to lead us to our final classification, Kraken. Uh, Kraken is oh, not exclusive to this game. Uh, Kraken just doesn't happen in a lot of games because a lot of games don't have the ridiculous cost and nickel and diming that Marvel Strike Force does. Most games either have a very cosmetic level of spending, and you know, for example, uh, League of Legends. You could buy a new character, you know, they come out with, what, four or five characters a year. You buy the character and that's it. You could spend, you know, $50 a year on League of Legends and have everything you need. But the skins that they come out with, they come out with about 20 or 30 skins a year and some people just like to collect. Krakens at their heart aren't whales. They're playing a different game. They're playing I Want to Collect. It's not as much about being competitive. It, it's not the highest priority of a Kraken. They just happen to be competitive due to how their accounts or their rosters tend to look in many games. Um, there are some games where you can't be a Kraken. Uh, World of Warcraft is a perfect example. You cannot spend money to consistently be better than people who play the game. Uh, better in any ostensible use of that word. So, Kraken offers aren't specific. They are more situational. A Kraken isn't going to buy a 50 character shard offer that comes with, like this one, that comes with an arbitrary amount of gear just because they need the gear. Uh, that's unlikely. However, they will buy a 50 character shard offer with gear upon release of a character, if the character is currently unformable, they're, they're going to spend money, one, because they don't like to see gray characters or characters that are incomplete, two, they don't like empty stars, uh, three, they don't really have any other growth levels, so they're buying red star orbs on cooldown because it's the only chance they have of having stronger characters now since they've invested. Krakens also are buying the $34 tier 4 ability material offers because they're helping them progress what can only be described as one week's worth of effort uh, and it's making their numbers bigger. A Kraken is a collector of parts of the game and they are using whatever access to money they have to generate the highest impact on their personal roster and some degree their status among not only their peers but in the community. Not a bad thing, not an ego thing, just Krakens tend to stay Krakens. Uh, they they are kind of hook, line, and sinkered in. So there's not a specific off, uh, offer I can give that's an example. Uh, I'll put a couple that are close, but a lot of them come to Red Star offers. If you are willing to buy a Red Star offer just because you need it, 
you're probably drifting into the Kraken line, regardless of whether or not you buy new characters or whether a new character comes out and you buy every single offer that comes up and blitz really hard. Uh, you're 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 just spending the money because one, you're a gambler at heart and you really, really, really want to pull get the the feeling of pulling something, and two, it's really the only line of progression you have left uh, is through these RNG lines. So that that's kind of the four classification of spenders, not just. Uh, by my definition, but how most games in this industry kind of look at uh, spenders. Uh, and, and you'll find out from anyone in the industry, they'll tell you that when you open a ticket uh, uh, with support, uh, you know, a little color stamp or a title or a name comes up based on how much you spend. Uh, and more importantly, how frequently you spend. If, if you spent uh, $300 the opening week of the game and you have not spent since it doesn't matter how strong you are doesn't matter if you spent a thousand dollars that that's not a record that they particularly care about like oh great that's nice but if you are a frequent spender and a frequent high spender you're gonna have like a gold star next to your name on support which is saying like pretty much make them happy because they're they're keeping our money going um the last thing i want to say on this and it's not really related to this but it, it's it's kind of more of the philosophy of, of spending in, in anything, really, and something called the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle says, uh, at its core, it's, it's basically 20% uh, of the causes generate 80% uh, of the effects. And in, in business, or more specifically in marketing, it, it goes a little bit like 20% of the spenders uh, make up for, you know, 80% of the rest of the community. Uh, this game does not abide by the Pareto Principle. In this game, uh, taking their numbers at face value, there are, you know, probably about 500,000 active accounts with over a million accounts that are pseudo-active or transitioning from full-time to casual player. Uh, it's closer to about 595. About the top 5% of the spenders in this game represent... Uh, you know, make, make up for the 95% of the rest of the player base. And to that extent, if you are spending 100, 400, $500 a month in this game, you're still not in that percentage. There are people who are spending significantly more than that, almost to a week level, uh, a weekly. And there's a common uh, misconception that uh, whales keep the game free for the rest of the community and, and that may be true it's possible but it's not a fact it's based on how the game is designed so i just want to get these ideas out there for you so you understand that you don't need to spend money in any game to to find enjoyment uh or you know fun these games games are supposed to be fun you're supposed to be playing them to enjoy yourself and uh you know have friends play and build a community and enjoy the Marvel characters or whatever game you play really I don't want to keep this specific to MSF everyone plays a lot of different games I do just want everyone to understand that I don't I hope nobody feels compelled to spend money in order to gain enjoyment out of the game find whatever of these classifications best suits you and be comfortable in that there's no right or wrong answer there's no reward for spending the least or zero dollars nor is there a reward for spending the most money in the game it's all about personal enjoyment what you can enjoy and how many friends and cool alliance mates and then people you get to meet along the way so please don't take this as a uh, guide just just take this more as as base value of and explaining of where you might fall in your spending, how people may evaluate you from from their perspective, and know that there's no right or wrong amount to spend as long as you're enjoying yourself playing the game. And if you're not enjoying yourself and you're not enjoying the game, no amount of spending is going to change that. At that point, there's either a problem with the game, the the way you're interacting with the game, or you know maybe some kind of personal thing going on in your life and you're kind of distracted. Either way. I just don't want people to ever have the impression that there is a monetary relief for enjoyment in, a, in an action that you're taking that's supposed to be fun. Play the game, enjoy the game, 
spend whatever you can afford and whatever will help you enjoy the game to that level, but don't look at spending as a requirement and don't fall into the traps that many games, including Marvel Strike Force, uh, will bait you into believing that if you don't spend, you can't have fun. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say on this topic. Thanks for uh, kind of letting me divulge and divert into uh, a, r a rant. So I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli. Uh Thanks for watching.